Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. We've got a clear sky forecast for this evening with above average transparency and good seeing. So I'm on the road here with a couple of members of the Black Hills Astronomical Society and we're heading to a class one dark sky site in northwestern South Dakota. Now they say telescope aperture rules for visual work but a class one dark sky will put the holy cow and wow back in your vocabulary. And it's the best place to learn the constellations and the objects in the night sky. Now to help you find some of these objects, there's a thing they call setting circles. Before go-to telescopes was the way folks found things. Now in theory, they show the right ascension and declination, or azimuth and altitude, to which your telescope is pointed. Now back in the day, they used tables to find these objects, but the advantage of a planetarium or astronomy app on your phone is that you can look these things up in real time. Well, here we are. Class One Dark Skies. episode we're going to cover how to use and manufacture setting circles for a Dobsonian mounted telescope. I have this Explorer Scientific ultra lightweight Dob here that I made a couple of mods over the course of the time that I've had it. Some of those mods are posted here on Dakota Starry Nights and we're going to cover this platform that you can use for any Dobsonian telescope with an adjustable setting circle so you can dial it right into the pole so that when you go around and looking for targets you'll be able to get at least within the ballpark it'll make acquisition a whole lot easier so let's begin by checking out some of the mods we got here and then from here we'll go over to the shop and take a closer look at how they were performed okay so the first thing we want to do is get it pointed towards the North Star or North using a compass and once the platform is roughly pointed towards Polaris or the North then we want to level it up in east-west direction and after that's done we want to level it up in north-south. So now we want to take the rocker box and put it on top of the Lazy Susan platform with zero on the setting circles pointing north. Once you set the rocker box on top of the Lazy Susan, now you just assemble the daub as you normally do. Okay, for altitude adjustment, what I've done here, I have a digital angle gauge that is mounted to a spring-loaded bar or piece of steel and it has butterfly nuts here at the top and is spring-loaded in between. The way this works is you need to zero it out on a level spot. On this one it has a zero indicator button right here and this is the on and off. Uh, once you get it zeroed out then you turn it on to start the calibration process, you get on a bright star like Vega or one of the brightest stars that you know well, Alberio or one of those. You look up the altitude in your uh, astronomy app on your phone or tablet and put it in the center of the crosshairs of your eyepiece. And now you see that this is reading here 52 degrees but according to the tablet that star should be at 50 degrees 
So here's where the spring-loaded system comes into play. 55. So you're going to turn these either up or down depending on which way you need to go to adjust because you're going to calibrate it and right there. So now we're at 50 degrees in altitude. And now we go back to our planetarium program, check the altitude on that star and uh, if it's at 50 and we're in the centers of the crosshairs, you are calibrated. So that should be good for the rest of the night. And that's all there is to it. It's a simple matter of uh, going to a bright star, uh, checking the altitude, and then making an adjustment on the spring system. When you install the metal plate that's going to support the digital angle gauge, over here is the eyepiece on this daub, and here's the 50 millimeter finer scope. And right here, I usually put a red dot. So I use uh, really three different kinds of visual aids. They all have their advantages and disadvantages, and together they work very nicely. So over here, you have an altitude bearing, and over here, there's an altitude bearing, and you want to be right in the middle of the, that bearing and that bearing with this gauge. It'll just give you that much more accuracy when you uh, calibrate this. Now you could put it over here. But it's not going to be quite as good as having it right in the middle of the two altitude bearings. So try to find your spot right in the middle there and that's going to make it uh, work a lot better for you. So let's say you wanted to look for the Andronomer galaxy and you go to your phone or tablet or uh, laptop uh, and turn on your astronomy app. Uh, we're using Stellarium here for this uh, demonstration. And you look up Andronomer and then uh, you click on Info. Now it's going to vary according to your app. So on the app it's telling us in real time that it's located at 53.3 degrees and we are reading 51.5. So we simply raise this up until we get to 53.3 and 53.4, close enough. Now from here we go to the 50 millimeter finder scope and see if we can't find the object and if not then we go to the eyepiece. So that's basically how it works. Okay, so here's underneath the Lazy Susan, and I have a piece of vinyl sheeting that is on top of the wood here. And here is the large wing nut uh, with a washer. This is a 2x6. Measurements here are this 31 across by 24, let's say. This is just pocket screwed here and here and then over here I've got these braces that are pocket screwed and glued and over here is a 5 8 inch nut underneath this washer and it's countersunk in there. If you look at my video uh, ideas for a scope buggy I get into uh, detail on how to create this jack and this is a 5 8 inch uh, screw and then there's two holes drilled in this flat washer and that's the cap to hold that 5 8 inch nut in place and that's what operates this up and down. This is a shelving bracket but you can use anything uh, basically a piece of one by whatever you want to use. I tend to use what I have laying around the shop and that uh, gives it some uh, extra stability uh, and all you need is three of these so let's take a look to see what's on the Lazy Susan, what makes that up. So we'll flip this over. It's pretty simple. Half inch piece of MDF that's medium density fiberboard. It's better than particle board. You could use plywood, but what I like about the MDF board, it has no memory. It's consistent. It's used in you know higher quality furniture. It's this is oak, but it could be anything. Uh, again, I had this laying around, so that was cut, and that is. Of course, you can adjust these measurements to your daub. I'm using a 12-inch Explorer Scientific ultra lightweight that I've done a review on here of Dakota Starry Nights, and that is uh, 20 and a half inches uh, in diameter. And then here's the vinyl that lays on top 
and then the bearing system is right here. And all these are are nylon skids that you put in the bottom of a chair leg. It already comes with a nail right here, comes with a nail. And so the vinyl rides on top of this nylon skids and it reduces the friction so that when you get the weight of the daub on there, you're not dragging it across. And of course, this is from a 10 speed bike wheel that I had laying around from another project that I had did. So that's how this is built. And then of course it has the nuts here that lock it down that once you get level here and then lock this down, lock these down and that stiffens it up see, so it doesn't get wobbly. And then once this is level, then you get this and you raise this or lower this accordingly. And again, we can just put that there like that. And put that right over the top. This is, uh, I believe that's a half inch bolt because that's five eighths, so that's about half inch bolt. And if you could, they do have carriage bolts, but if you could, you, it'd be good to have something that's smooth here, that it has this neck that's smooth, okay? And that way it doesn't eat in, uh, if it was threaded, it would start to eat there. And the length of this, it's a three inch machine bolt. And um, none of this is real expensive. Uh, most of this I had laying around from other projects. I do a lot of different projects, as you probably figured by now. And so you just loosen that up and then it, that turns your rocker box. All right. So let's take a look underneath of the rocker box uh, setting circles in azimuth. Okay, I've got my cage put inside the rocker box and there's a pillow here and then here's the secondary. And so I run a bungee cord that has this rubber tubing on it to keep anything from getting scratched. And then here's the secondary, and this is a vitamin bottle that goes over the secondary. And that just protects it. I'll just show you. I think that protects the secondary. And there's the vitamin bottle. It's got slits in it here and here and here and here, four slits, and they line up with the spider. And that keeps the secondary nice and clean, and also it uh, prevents any unwanted damage. Okay, and now that comes out of there. And here's the pillow, and we'll put that over there. And now let's turn this upside down so you can see the magic. Okay, so here I have uh, that beaded board. And it's actually the same board that's here on the bottom of the Explorer Scientific and that they actually used on the uh, altitude bearings. They used this beaded board. So there are, now this is going to vary, guys. If you have an Explorer Scientific, then this method will work but basically you know this is not that difficult to do but there are three pads here and you undo the pads and then that releases this part here and once that's released then underneath there's some more padding three other pads that ride on bearings and all it is is you print out this setting circles and I did it at, uh, I think it was Office Mac uh, that printed this out for me on a nice heavier paper. And then I had them laminate it. Then I attached it to a piece of beaded board. And I put it on there with contact cement and that keeps it nice and rigid. I have the link uh, in the description on where you can uh, get this uh, and PDF file. And then you take the PDF file to a print shop. It's not that terribly expensive. There's different sizes depending on your daub on uh, how big you, you want to make this. Um, so you're going to want to do some figuring there. And then on this side, all I did was take a piece of vinyl and put two screws through there, through the metal here, and made an indicator. This slides back and forth. Originally, I was trying to adjust it that way, but it really wasn't enough adjustment sometimes. So that's why I came up with the Lazy Susan idea. This worked okay, 
but with this system I've got, I can go to any bright star that's up there, it doesn't matter what it is, then I'm good to go. All right. So once you've located your wheel, then you can put it in a vise that I have here. And these have a square sided neck to them. And you'll take a adjustable wrench and turn it. If you're facing the wheel, then you turn it to your right and that starts to loosen it up. Now in the beginning, these are kind of snug. But once you get around halfway around the wheel, it'll start to take the tension off and you'll be able just to take your hand or your fingers and just turn it right off like so. Now you can always come along with a pair of wire cutters and cut these off if you want. But I'm the kind of guy where I usually wind up repurposing stuff later on. So I want to give myself the option in case I want to put this back together and use it for something else. And it's metal and so that's going to allow me to put a magnet indicator on there so I could use it at any position. So here's the magnet indicator. Basically it's just a round magnet with a piece of a board hot glued to the back of it and some orange tape and then it'll point to where the telescope is pointing and we'll just clip it on like that and then that way it could be moved around uh, to get uh, it aligned to the celestial pole or close enough to where once we look into a finder scope we'll be able to uh, see the object or at least be very close to where if we move the telescope around we'll have it come into the eyepiece. Okay to ensure that it doesn't move even though we marked it. Uh, we're going to put a, two clamps on here. Let's make sure it stays in place. And we've got these little holes drilled in on the side and I'm using one inch drywall screws. They'll go in on an angle. And just a little bit. You don't want to sump it up too much because it'll make it move. And we'll get the opposite side. It's only going to take three. Uh, if you want to put more, you put more, of course, but I think three is going to be fine. And that's got that. And now one up front. So there it is. And that's good enough to hold it. Um, and then our dial will go completely around like that, anywhere we want. So there is another alternative to this method, and that is to use a stick or a bar, like I've got here, and then what you would do is, when you move the scope, you would just stick this in the ground as your marker, and then turn the Lazy Susan until you can get to that uh, marker. However, the reason why I went with this is I use a rubber ground cloth to prevent moisture from coming up and in case I drop something, I can find it and it's not lost in the grass forever and ever. And so with the ground cloth, uh, I don't want to be poking holes through it with this. But if you don't feel like you want to use that, then you could really just use a piece of steel or even a branch or a twig or a, a dowel or a long pencil or whatever just to uh, mark it. So once you get it level and you lock it down with the nuts, uh, then you would uh, go to a star, any star. Once you're on that star, then let's say star is supposed to be 200. Now because you're off, you are pointed right here. You're right on that star, you look through the eyepiece. So to calibrate it, you need to have this line up with that. So. In order to do that, we come right here with the marker, the indicator, okay, and then we unlock the Lazy Susan, the wing nut on the bottom, and then we just turn this until this comes to 200, till this comes to that. So now we come to here, we turn it, and now it reads 200, and now we go back and slide the dob over, look back through the eyepiece again, and 
check our tablet to see uh, what is the uh, azimuth for that star in real time, which is what's cool about having uh, a tablet. Uh, back in the day, they had tables, and you had to look into the tables. And But with a tablet, it gives you it in real time. So now I look through the eyepiece. I've got the star in the crosshairs. And so now this is calibrated. So anywhere I go, if I look at my tablet looking for a target, I just move it around. If the target is 170 in azimuth, I go to 170. And so now it should be roughly accurate. Now, this is not going to be precise. There are variables. There are variables in when you attach this to this, whether it was a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, you're going to be in ballpark. You're still going to have to use your uh, acquisition skills, which is great because that's why I like visual because it challenges me moving the daub around and finding these objects and getting to learn the sky and the constellations. We may not be in the middle of nowhere, but we could see it from here. And if you like what you saw here today, give us a thumbs up. We'd sure appreciate it. Now hold on now. Here it comes. Nightfall.